Welcome, welcome. Chicken Little here with another New Year reincarnation video and an update in life. Now, guys, it has been a minute because I have, a few weeks ago, I experienced some jaw pain and I've cracked a tooth before and I've exposed the nerve. So I know what pain feels like when it comes to tooth pain. And this was pretty bad. This wasn't quite as bad as exposing that nerve with a cracked tooth, but it was bad and I knew exactly what it was. And so my mouth was in so much pain, I was having a hard time talking. That was when I sent out my cryptic message a few weeks back, basically saying, hey guys, I gotta take a break because I probably am going to be going through some things here maybe getting a root canal and a crown and a few other things. And by the way, all of these things were scheduled. So, but none of them happened. And there's a reason for that. So basically I just put that message forward saying, hey guys, I'm, you know, I'm still playing, but I'm not gonna be doing a whole lot of talking because my mouth is in so much pain right now. And it turned out that I went to a few dentists. I got some things looked at. We settled on a root canal for my back tooth back here down on the bottom. And I got in, they basically were ready to go on me and they did one of their big 3D x-ray things. It gets in there and does some really cool work. And I've even got some of the pictures from it. There is a hole in my jaw where an infection got into the cracked tooth and went down the tooth into my jaw and rotted out a part of my jaw. And so what was causing me all of the pain more than the, ex more than the crack in the tooth because that wasn't exposing a nerve was the actual disease in my jaw and in my tooth, which was inflaming and affecting everything. So we had to treat it for the infection. We had to get rid of it with antibiotics. And so I've been on a regimen of that for the last 10 days. Obviously I'm feeling better because the infection's gone. I've let myself go a little bit, let my beard grow out my, you know, I need a haircut, a few other things, but I'm about to head out into the field to pick up some, uh, some uh, work on something else I was doing before I settled back into the office for the next week or so. So I was in there about to go under the knife and they said, you know what? I don't feel comfortable doing this, the uh, endodontist. And she said, you, you have a crack in your tooth and it's a big one, I could see it. And if we do this root canal, it's not going to stick. It's not gonna hold. So what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to pull that tooth. So now I've got two missing teeth along the back of my mouth. But she said, the good news is, is that we can do an implant on the spot where the tooth was pulled out last year and that way basically your teeth won't start floating around doing weird things in your mouth because your teeth basically all support each other. And so if they stick something back there, it becomes basically a backstop and it keeps the other teeth from moving. So they're gonna do that. And this is gonna be a process that I'm undergoing for the next five months between everything else they have to do in there. So I've got about a week and a half window right now where I can do this and I'm gonna try and make the most of it. I can do this and then that tooth is getting pulled, which is gonna make the mouth pretty sore. I'm not gonna to wanna to do a whole lot of talking, so I'll probably take a little bit of a break. And as soon as that heals, then they're gonna drill an implant in there and a few other things. So this is gonna be this is gonna be interesting to work around. But I wanted to not spend too much time on that. Also, fully moved into my new house, which I'm really super thrilled about. I've got this beautiful workspace that I'm working in right now, and I'm obviously Beautiful scenery behind me, birds chirping, everything. It's, it's wonderful out here. Not a whole lot of people. That's the way I like it. So um, I'm going to be kind of keeping up on a few things. I'm going to go ahead and this is going to be where we transition from Ziggy's life to the, the, the game. And I'm just gonna say we've closed out with the reasons with the a reason, the arena subjugation and part one, and that was so much fun. I had such a blast doing that. I've always enjoyed arena, but this got me excited about arena because there was there was a lot of competition going on and people were basically putting their best foot forward. And it was really interesting to see some of the team combinations that people came up with. And I enjoyed it. I actually came up with a few new ones myself just to kind of play with timing and things, to stagger things out, to outpace people, to just not full speed teams, but speed teams with a lot of, with a lot of damage attached to them and stuff. And it was a really fun time. So I hope they do this again sooner than later. 
Um, probably not every week, but make it kind of a special thing. The rewards, nothing to speak about. I mean, I got, I, I suffer unfortunately from living on the East Coast. So basically I go to bed four hours before the season is up and a lot happens in four hours. I went to bed this time three hours before the season was up and I went from rank six to rank 101, which was, uh, I couldn't have made top 100 guys. Come on. I mean, come on guys, come on, throw me a bone here. But <laughs> so it was a, uh, it was, it was fun though. I really enjoyed it. I'm never going to be making top 10 or 20 or 50 or whatever, unless it's a regular season, which I consistently do make top 50, but, uh, it, it's just not going to happen unless I want to set an alarm, wake myself and my wife up, which would not go over well at 3 AM or something and, uh, and dive in or 3.30 a.m. I probably would be hearing about it the next day. So I'm, I'm probably not going to do that. Happy wife, happy life. So this season though, uh, this was hot and heavy, a lot of great players out there. And really what it did is just to, just to summarize for the people who haven't had a chance to really look into it or may not be in the know, it took, if you've ever achieved the 400 K, uh, team force or higher, any of those achievements at any point in the game. So if you had a team at any point that clocked in over 400K, you were eligible for this arena subjugation. And if you didn't, then you weren't. So that's really the that's really the TLDR of it. And there were a lot of people in there and it was great to see. And everybody was really going ham. So again, more stuff like this. It kind of sets apart the people who really play a lot more and separates them from the people who don't play as much. And this is a part about this I like as well. It gives the people who don't play as hard better chances of ranking higher, which is really cool, actually. I kind of like breaking it down into the higher tier, the mid tier, and if they ever decide to do a low tier or anything like that, that would be really cool. And it would give more players a chance to get those wins in the PvP arena and give them a little bit of that maybe boost of confidence that they it's really hard to walk into a room with big guys when you're the little guy and to try and compete against them physically. It just, it's it's immediately demoralizing. But when you walk into a room with people who are at your similar skill level, similar size and everything else, it makes it much easier to engage in that initial competition. And I think that if the developers choose to continue doing things like this, where they tear off based off of team power, that could be a really interesting way of doing things and adding more flavor to the competitive side of the game. Now, going back to my video, Saving Mirror Reincarnations part two and three, really I talked about giving a little bit more on the, um, on the competitive side because that is an element of the game and any of the other games that I've played that incorporate those elements that really does spur the player base on. So this is something that still can use a lot of exploration. Whether or not the developers choose to do that is obviously up to them, but it would be a very good thing for the game because it would incentivize players and play time. So let's talk about a few other things. Uh, we've got a limited collaboration coming up soon because the Japanese Twitter just announced they were doing a live stream. This is a telltale sign that something big is coming. Now, what is going to happen with this limited collaboration? I've had a few predictions on this in the past, so I'll just go ahead and reiterate them here. The biggest, and Farplane actually touched on this too, so I'm going to touch a little bit in sort answering his video, but maybe clarifying my point with him a little bit more because I made a real brief snippet. We talked just a little bit, but um, here's what he said. He said that the limited collaborations basically are things that usually bring something really good to the table. We have fabled Sorry You, who is an amazing arena support and actually good in other places of the game, but she really focuses on arena. But with her, this is, the, this is a specific type of character costume she is. She requires you to awaken her to three. That's four copies of that unit because her third passive is a team agility up, which is very good in arena. Without that, she just does not have as much potential. Now there are other limited collaboration units that get something nice for Awakening 3, but not critical. And these are gonna be the units that are becoming more desirable. We saw this also in the celebratory banners. We had the first celebratory banner and the second celebratory banner. The first one, all three of those units, 
Well, except for, we'll say, not celebratory Lavania. His was fine, but, eh, actually really the only one that needed to be was Seraphia because she got that chonky 20% bold vigor. I will also point out here that Celebratory Marie has a 40% bold vigor at Awakening Zero. So don't sleep on these older Celebratory units. I actually slotted Celebratory Marie into my arena teams as just an absolute nuke because I was running with some tankier teams so she could she was sheltered from that a little bit from the damage side of things. And there were occasions where she would hit a tank for over 400k. I, she does ridiculous damage with that 40% bold vigor. And Crow is another one who's very good with that. I believe he has a, is it a 50 or 60% bold vigor? He's got, I mean, again, don't sleep on these characters with these big passives. So getting back to what I was saying and kind of answering Farplane here, Farplane mentioned that we are probably gonna be getting a new collaboration in the coming weeks, which I agree with. It's about the time for that to happen, probably in the next month, I would say, sometime within that area. And are we gonna see a return of Final Fantasy XIV? Because that was the first limited collaboration we got in Near Reincarnation. And I'm not talking about the other Near games like uh, like uh, like Near Replicant or Near Automata or Dragon Guard. I'm talking about collaborations for things that take place outside of Nier. So that's your Sinnoh Alice, your Final Fantasy XIV, your Persona Five. These guys are not uh, these guys are not a part of the Nier universe, so they're not going to have the same recurring banners in the same meaningful way. So what does this do? This changes our calculus a little bit with how we look at these. And I'll dive into this again, maybe down the road when we actually do a banner analysis and a unit analysis. But what it really comes down to is pulling a single copy of a unit is hard to do. It, the, the anniversary showed me that. I, by the skin of my teeth and by getting a few extra tickets from Arena and things like that, was able to pull a copy of F66X, sell of F66X after nearly 200 pulls, after nearly going to pity, I finally got her. And that was the case for a lot of my pulls during anniversary. So, and I know my pulls were not as good as a lot of others. My pulls were generally speaking pretty bad, but I was able to get the units that I wanted and I'm satisfied with that. And the good thing about her is that you do not need to awaken her to get her full potential. She is good at awakening zero and I've been using her. She basically unlocks easy mode in the game. She and Yuletide Gale, two of the most busted units in the game. If you have either of these, don't sleep on them. They are amazing, amazing units. So where does this take us with these limited banners? And this is a bit of a rant video, but this is just kind of me catching up with things because I've had a lot of thoughts over time. Okay, so the limited banners. If Final Fantasy XIV returns, this means that there is hope for those limited collaboration banners moving down the road. Because the biggest question mark left in the air at this point has been, are these limited banners going to return? And in the absence of a generic awakening, because we do have a quasi-generic awakening in the game of sorts right now but it is not for any of the limited collaboration banners and it's only for banners up to a certain point. And these are those tokens, those medals that we've been receiving every day. You get 28 of them, you turn them in for one of the Mama Exchange tokens, and then you can pull a copy of any character that has been released in the mainline game, as well as the near collaborations. So this is a sort of quasi-generic material and it actually works. I'm okay with every 28 days getting a new unit. That's cool. And it's a unit of choice, which is actually really cool. And so it allows you to kind of flush out your account in different areas. And the banner is going to be resetting, I think, next month, which may mean because now we're going to have an overlap of tokens. We're not going to have quite enough to pull another unit, but we're going to have more than what we needed. So my suspicion is that it's going to reset. There's going to be a new banner and maybe it will include newer units and hopefully units like New Year's Yuri, who I was not able to get, and I will be able to get her, finally, and I'll finally have a wind damage specialist. So things like this, these are, these are cool things that could happen, but the question mark still remains for the collaboration banners. If they continue to be drivers in terms of power, and they really haven't been, except for, I will argue, Fabled Akeha, she is a fire specialist, and Fabled Saryu, she is an arena specialist, 
And outside of that, Crow, very, very good, but he's kind of a flex unit. He, I mean, what he does well, he does better than anybody else. And Joker is great. Queen is great. Joker may be the most widely useful of the bunch of the persona. Final Fantasy XIV really got power crept very quickly, so maybe we'll see some changes with rebalancing power with them, or maybe we'll just see new units if it comes back. And I wouldn't put it beyond the developers to release something really juicy, like maybe a rerun of one of the Nier games, because we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen any real updates to them, and this is a near title, so it would make sense for them to occasionally revisit some of these older games they originally brought through with the collaborations. So my advice, hold on to your resources. Don't just go pulling on a banner unless you really want something that's on it, unless you really maybe need something that's on it, because I think we're going to be getting some really interesting collaborations. But here's my other part of advice for the collaborations. Look at the costume. Does it work at Awakening Zero or does it need to be awakened at three, which means you have to have four copies, which means in theory, I would say you would be safe with having probably enough to pity twice, enough resources, gems to pity twice, which is a lot of resources. So in the absence of that, I have to be very cautious about pulling on limited banners. And I would strongly urge caution with those. And I would say that the other the other sets of banners that we have in the game are probably better investments because they do return. A lot of good banners have been in the regular pull and those do return after, I wanna say six weeks, they actually go into the regular pull. And so we have more access to these. So Planet, in the absence of generic Awakening Stones, be very, very choosy about pulling on collaboration banners unless we are starting to see them return more regularly. Then that's then my entire calculus changes on that. As far as other things going on in the game, the Fate Board challenges, oh my goodness, those have been so much fun. Getting all of the tower levels unlocked all at once and being permanent features in the game, I'll be, I'll be square with you guys. I never cleared all the tower levels. I, I cleared the levels, but I didn't clear all the achievements because I just didn't have the roster to do it and I didn't have the time and patience to really sit down and crank through it. And that's a big part of the reason why I still, even though now I have Yule Akeha, I got her with my, with my mama pity, and I still haven't gone back into subjugation. I know I need to because if I'm going to keep pushing my arena team, I need those materials, but I just haven't done it because I just don't have the time to do it. And that's a, that is a drawback of that. The people who do it do it very well. It just hasn't really been a thing that I've done for a while now. And so with the, with the emphasis on getting all of these, these elements, it's, it's cool to see different elements of the game being unlocked. And it's cool to see these things becoming more permanent. We are seeing the fate boards, by the way, rerun every every other week. So we'll probably get the water, fire, wind fate board with floors, with levels one through 10 plus through level 15 very soon. And I'm, again, I'm gonna say it, Yule, Gale, and Celeb F66X. I have now Celeb F66X. I went through and I cleared all the new Fate Board challenges, but I went back through them with her and it was easy. It was so easy. She is a goddess. These Both of these characters are goddesses. And speaking of gods and goddesses, um, what do you all think of that new Yuzuki EX quest. Actually, I really enjoyed Hina's too. I think Hina's is being undersold right now just because Yuzuki's was so impactful. But what do you all think of those EX stories, man? Wow. I just, again, chef's kiss to the story, guys. They are doing wonderful work. And I also have a feeling that we, they're underselling it right now, but I have a feeling we're going to be seeing some additional characters with the new season. They're showcasing the existing characters that we have, but it feels to me like there is more story to be told here because they just went into two aspects of Nier and Drakengard lore where things tie over from, uh, I believe it's ending E from the original Drakengard. 
and they went into aspects of lore that had never been fully explored in any other game. And I, and I went over to the Reddit, the near Reddit, and some of, some people were really excited about it. Others were bemoaning the fact that these critical pieces of lore to the story emerged in a mobile title. Well, obviously they've never played near reincarnation because it feels better than a mobile title, just any old walk in the park mobile title. But we're getting some really awesome, awesome lore stuff here, guys. So maybe one of these days I'll have to update my uh, my uh, lore video for the for the Yoko Taro games, um, or we could just add to it incrementally over time. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it here for right now. I have uh, I'm probably going to put together a arena, not arena nightmares, but arena madness because I actually did very well on my win streak in arena this season because I cheated. I had F66X, so I, I unlocked easy mode on the game. And I won a lot more than I lost. Uh, there were some teams that I had to test against a few times because they just didn't, they were, they were so janky the way they were set up to where I just had a hard time understanding the way their timing and mechanics worked. And then once I understood it, it became much easier to beat them. But that was the thing. That was the cool part, the creative part that people were actually testing and understanding the mechanics of the game enough to where they understood what people would be throwing at them and so they were able to counter it. It was really, really cool. Again, this is really great stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Still getting over a flu uh, in addition to the tooth. So, and the jaw is just, wow, what a week or two or three. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it here. Um, the plans moving forward, I'm really gonna try and get out my 500 subscriber thank you. Uh, there are a few other things that I want to talk about in the community because I have been uh, indirectly, uh, I've been indirectly referenced multiple times, and I really probably should bring this up and mention it and my reasoning behind it. And uh, also, I wanted to do a little bit more diving into the mechanics of the game, the uh, sort of a new user kind of guide. I've had a friend who's played this game, and he's been asking after it for a little while now, and I really need to do that. So let's just go ahead and leave it here. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. I hope you all enjoyed Arena Subjugation. I hope you guys are getting pumped for what's coming up next. And I hope you guys are enjoying the uh, bevy of content that we have right now, which I still have yet to clear. So peace out, y'all. Have a wonderful day. I will talk to you next time. Bye.